Wow, rare moth species, giant moth species, moths that have never been filmed before by anyone, except Bart Coppens of course, the owner of the highest quality butterfly and moth oriented channel on YouTube. Today I'm going to do a biological survey on a mountainside. The mountain is called Mount Elgon, an ancient volcano mountain in the country of Uganda. The current altitude is 2000 meters. On Mount Elgon there are many rare and even endemic species of plants and animals. It is located on the border of Uganda and Kenya. The altitude of the highest peaks is over 4000 meters, but I guess we didn't want to go that extremely high. Our environment is tropical rainforest and we are using mercury vapor light bulbs to attract local species of moths. Let's start the video! Alright everyone, I'm here with my friend Dan in a cottage where we're going to stay for three days. So let's find out what kind of insects we can find here. My name is Bart Coppens, a traveling entomologist that travels the world to look for rare butterflies and moths. And you are watching my Uganda series. That's right, I travel to Uganda, a country in Africa, to document the rarest butterflies and moths. Find the playlist for more Uganda episodes. Ladies and gentlemen, are you back for another night of moth trapping in Uganda? In the tropical rainforest. Oh wait, this is a bit too dark. You can barely see my gorgeous beautiful face. Ooh, look at it, I'm like a Hollywood celebrity, just kidding. Hollywood celebs aren't that attractive, really. Trust me on that one. I have no source, I literally just made it up, but they're not. Anyway, don't worship Hollywood celebrities. It's very cringe, it's very cringe. But today we are running a light trap that's going to attract insects. As you can see, some of them are already coming into the light. What's the point of doing that? Well, that's so we can study the animals. My name is Bart Coppens, I study butterflies and moths and I'm the owner of the biggest YouTube channel about these insects. Yeah, on the entire platform. That's right. Guess I'm the Hollywood celeb here. Ooh, but for real. I hope we're gonna see some beautiful species tonight and hopefully we are lucky enough to get that. Let's get started. Some small stuff is turning up, but you know what? Size doesn't always matter, it's how you use it. And some of these are very pretty. Let me show you, whoop, oh, it flew away. Take this one for example, ladies and gentlemen. This one, this is called the Plushy Bunny Moth. The scientific name is Melantia xanthospila. And as you can see, this small species actually has some beautiful and intricate color patterns so yes even the small things matter even the small things are worthy of looking at and the interesting thing about this species is i think i was one of the first to document his life cycle i even have a video about that on youtube somewhere on my channel so it's cool to see it on a, in a wild. It's cool to encounter something that you've reared before in captivity. It's somewhat a common species, but females are much bigger and harder to get. This one is a male. Oh, and there it goes. So, as you can see we're getting started. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, a very big hawk moth just came in. Let me try and show it to you. Grab the camera. Interestingly, it did not want to land on the sheet. It landed on the rope that we use to keep the sheet together. Now I have to be careful not to scare it off. And gently put it on my hand, just like that. Oh yes, it's very cooperative today. 
Let me bring it into the light. Here's one of my favorite hog moths again, my old friend Marco Poliana. This right here is the biggest hog moth that I've seen so far in Uganda. It is truly massive, I tell you. The species is Marco Poliana natalensis. Hog moths are important for the environment, often being pollinators for specific types of flowers. This species is found in a lot of countries, including Cameroon, Central African Republic, Congo, Ethiopia, Gabon, Ghana, the Ivory Coast, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda and Zimbabwe. Caterpillars feed on plants such as Markhamia lutea or Nile tulip tree, Olea europea or olive tree, Vitex remani or pipe stem tree, Bachisteria and Spartodea. The markings and size of these moths are absolutely and incredibly gorgeous. Wow! Since recently I like to measure temperatures and humidity when I'm moth trapping, so we can make notes of the temperatures when the moths start flying. Now a lot of people don't believe me if I say that some of the tropical moths in tropical rainforests, even here in Uganda, fly at low temperatures. That's because we're on a mountain because of the altitude. Now as you can see here, I brought this equipment that's measuring the temperature and humidity. And let me show you the value. That's quite cold, right? Obviously during the day, it gets way warmer, way hotter out here because of the sun, but at night things cool down. And here on the mountain it's very moist, very humid, and quite chilly actually. These could be temperatures you could get in summer in the Netherlands at night. This could be the lichen form of Eutelia amatix, but I can be wrong. This species seems to have a lot of color forms and a massive variety in color. It's found in Ethiopia, Gambia, Kenya, Madagascar, Mozambique, South Africa, Tanzania and Uganda. In fact, this is probably my first Eutelidae species I've seen in the wild. They're in their own unique little family of moths and the caterpillars of this species feed on Anacardiaceae type plants. Cute noctuate with moon-like markings. I did not manage to identify it. Do my viewers know it? Alright folks, I just found a very fascinating rabbit that I've always wanted to see in my life. I believe the common name is a sundowner moth. And while it really looks like a sphingid, it really isn't. It's an rabbit. Think of underwing moths, fruit piercing moths, or black witches, the ones you see in South America. This is kind of like an African relative of those. And if we look close, we see it has very nice colors. The Sphingomorpha lorea moth boasts a mesmerizing palette, reminiscent of a Renaissance painting. Its primary hue is a rich grey-brown, adorned with subtle olive-green undertones that evoke the hearty and earthy tranquility of a forest at dawn. Across its wings, 
delicate stripes of creamy white and soft pink intersect like brush strokes on a canvas, adding a touch of ethereal elegance to his appearance. These colors blend harmoniously, creating a tapestry of beauty that captivates observers and transports them to a realm of natural wonder and artistic inspiration. It is very, very widespread. I could read you a list of all the countries where it's found, but just keep in mind it is found nearly everywhere in tropical Africa. The host plants are numerous, but mostly commonly it uses the plant acacia, or woody legumes related to acacia. The caterpillar is fascinating as well. Personally, I would like to rear them in captivity one day, just like I did with its relative, the black witch moth. These moths are reportedly very attracted to overripe fruit. This could be Metarctia, but I'm not sure to be honest. Oh hey cool, a Trabala species. This one is Trabala caron, a common one in Africa. The other pillars of this species like plants from the Combretaceae family like Germinalia or Combreta. They are very charismatic little leopard moths that look like leaves. Most species are typically a mix of green, brown or yellow. Alright ladies and gentlemen, up here on the porch, you probably cannot see it very well, but I can. There is a beautiful silk moth from the genus Apifora. If you watch all my videos, you may have seen them before. I once did a breeding video on one species from Africa. They are definitely worthy, worthy of taking a closer look at because they are not very well studied actually. Problem is it's a bit high. So let's see if I can gently bring it down somehow. Would be great if it just settled my net. Oh, it is. Ah, there you go. No issue. Right. That's good. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's sitting on my finger and just relaxing. Very fascinating. Moths from the genus Epiphora. I was that I've always wanted to see in the wild, so that's another moth that can go off my wish list. Unfortunately, it's not the most perfect looking specimen I've seen. There appears to be several chips missing from the wing. But you know what, that's okay. We are working with wild animals. And we cannot expect animals in the wild to be perfect all the time. They don't come from a factory, so to speak. The interesting thing about these kind of moths is that you can more or less see relatives of them worldwide. For example, those who live in North America will be familiar with the robin moth, the genus Hyalophora, which are a direct relative of this moth here on my finger. Or Calosamia, or Epacaria, the Coletta silk moth. Or for the viewers in Asia, you're probably familiar with the genus Atacus, the Atlas moths. Or Samia, which are also direct relatives of the moth here on my finger. So if you think about it, you may even go as far as look at the genus Rothschildia in South America, which are a distant relative. And this is the African equivalent of... The Atacini, I think that's the tribe of silk moth they belong to. 
which are allied to atlas moths and other relatives. And you can see the striking similarity. Some people call them white ringed atlas moths or African atlas moths. They don't really have an official common name. But I'm really glad to find it. The caterpillars usually feed on Rutacea, like members of the citrus family, or Ramnacea. There you go. Very nice. You can see like it has false snake heads on its wingtips and transparent crescents on its wings. And the fact that we found this one may mean that perhaps we may find more of them. So that's cool. I'm really happy with this one guys. This is one of the moths that really make my night and really make my trip here to Africa. I've always wanted to see these in the wild. Hopefully we can investigate these pieces a little bit further. I am not really a professional taxonomist or a scientist, but I am well connected and I have a lot of knowledge in some cases. So we'll see what we can do. But until then, it's interesting to just have a video and some pictures. It's getting later at night. Some folks are sleeping. So we're talking a little bit less loud. So put your volume up so you can still hear me. Sorry if I am unshaven and unkempt. I'm sitting here in the rainforest for a few days. We have no water and a little electricity. Yeah, I don't have really time to take care of myself, so I'm going feral. And you have to forgive me for looking like that. But first, I noticed something cool. And the cool thing I noticed, it's this tiger moth. Now in Africa, you have this special group of tiger moths with a very unique morphology, wing shape and appearance. This is one of them. And if I am not mistaken, this is a tiger moth that could be from the genus Balaka. Now what's really special about this group of African tiger moths is not just their, their unique morphology and their unique wing shape and appearances but also the fact they can be really surprisingly colorful and that virtually nothing is known about their ecology. In fact on my channel I tried to breed a species of Balakra once I was mildly successful, although I could not get the adults to mate for some reason. I think it was Balaka Karulai Fasia. And once again, I think I was the first person to ever document the life history of that one. And I think the life history of other Balaka species is equally unknown. So there is a lot that we have to learn about these animals. That includes not only their life cycles, but also much of their chemical e ecology and behaviors. We really don't know. So there need to be some bright minds, some scientists to study these animals. Hold on, just a small interjection for a moment, but to anybody who is interested in this group of moths and studying them, I recommend the Tiretini of Africa. So the Tiretini are a special group of tiger moths that are only found, as far as I'm aware, in tropical Africa. This book is one of the best works on the subject. It has plates of the genitals of these species. But it also has color plates that show some of this. Ah, here is my species that I filmed right now. See? 
Balak the Lubos Siata. And this is the book that I behind the scenes used to identify them. Guys, the internet is not great because the internet does not have every species, okay? Books still defeat websites. Books are still better than online sources, even today. Buy books if you want to identify species and research them on a professional level. Sorry for this interruption in the video, we will go back to the moth soon. I really recommend this book and I've been using it myself to look at species like the Balakra in this video. Let's continue. It does seem that females of them are a bit more rare in a moth trap. Once in a while I get males of these very unusual and colorful moths. But so far I have not seen any females. However, just enjoy their colors, I suppose. Wow, really colorful abdomen, white, with red spots. Very cool. So tonight we have this interesting setup here with two different lights. It seems to be working. The night tonight is mildly productive. I would not go as far as to call it a quiet night because we got some really interesting stuff such as that sundowner moth and the apifora, that cool silk moth you know, the atlas, atlas moth-like moth that we just found and some other cool stuff like that big tiger although I gotta say yesterday was more productive Today we only have three or four silk moths. Yesterday we had like 12 or 13 silk moths and various other creatures. There's also way less leopard moths today. But some of the moths go behind the sheet like this. That was not a fart, that was my shoe. Anyway, this is the door to my room by the way. And in this corner, sometimes the moths go behind here. And if we look closely, we see something interesting here. It looks like there is one and two different hog moths here and a big female leopard moth. So I'm gonna try to handle the hog moths. Hopefully they don't fly away. Usually they are quite calm if they settle on the sheet and stop flying. Oh yeah. Here we go. Oh, I think they are moths from the genus Pseudoclanus. So these hog moths are from the genus Pseudoclanus, which seem to be quite plentiful here in Africa. There's many species of them. Many of them tend to have these yellow hind wings, which is quite interesting. I think if you bugger them, oh, do you hear that sound? They show off the color. Supposedly it scares away predators. It's the same thing that many moths do. If you watch my channel, you will have seen this before. This behavior. It's kind of fascinating. It's interesting that they don't really seem to have proper eye spots. Oh well, they do have sort of eye spots in the middle of their wing. But it's different from what I've seen before. Anyway, seems like there's two of them. Sitting together. Hmm. Interesting little animals. Oh, there we go. One kind of freaked out. Anyway, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of African hawk moth goodness. I gotta say there are the hawk moths here in Uganda. Can be rather pretty. There you go. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Let's take a look at the big leopard moth female. Any, but... right. 
This giant moth kinda looks like a dead leaf. It is the female of a yet unidentified species of Mimopacha. Identifying the females of these leopard moths is hard because they are more rarely photographed, collected or documented than the males. But it is a genus of leopard moths that has a dozen or so species in Africa, I think. Do you recognize the species for me? If the, then don't please leave me a comment. I was not sure what species to identify it as, but it is large. Since this is a female, it could be interesting to see if she can lay eggs for captive breeding purposes. I do like these fascinating types of leopard moths. Very beautiful. Now folks, if you look at this side of the sheet, here on the floor, there is a few medium-sized set moths. Don't mess, don't mind the mess of cables down here and chargers, that's how I charge stuff like my camera. Let's start with this one. It's an interesting one. It does not seem to appreciate being touched at all. It's making it freak out a little bit. Very typical. Oh, come on. Just have to grab it a little bit. Oh, this beautiful silk moth is here found in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi and Rwanda. Its name is Gonimbrasia conradsi. And they are very variable. Some individuals have purple or pink hind wings and in others they are more grey or black in colour. Either way it's very and amazingly beautiful. Don't worry about the way I handle the moth, it is unharmed. I am a professional. These moths have an interesting, almost bile green color. For a Gonimbrasia species, it is actually rather small. Two badly damaged silk moths. And ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, I also just found these two silk moths, but they appear to be badly damaged. Especially the one on top here. Something weird is going on with that one. It looks like it's gotten stuck on there somewhere and rubbed off most of its scales, which makes it quite ugly at the moment. It also appears to be a runt. I think both of these are actually the same species. Both of them are males. This one here is very large and very colorful. I just compare it to the size of this presumably the same species runt. This just goes to show that runs happen in nature too. And the reason I'm saying that is because my channel is also about breeding silk moths in captivity. And sometimes in captivity they become smaller due to some circumstances. People blame genetics, people blame the quality of their diet, people blame things like stress. There's a lot of factors that determine the size of an insect. You see strength, vitality, and the environment. But here you can see it happens in nature too. Because this individual down here is really small compared to the usual size of this species. Could mean it was probably weaker or it was outcompeted when in terms of food. When the tree was defoliated, you never know, you never know. Very beautiful species. It could be Nudirelia dione or something related. I'll write the name in this video so you know it's accurate. It's really funny to finally see Nudarelia dione in the wild. This silk moth is really common. It's also gorgeous. I love their color and pink soft accent and cute little faces. 
it actually gives me a flashback. A flashback to my home country, the Netherlands. Because I used to breed hundreds of these exotic moths in captivity in Europe to document their life cycle. This species is actually super easy to breed in captivity, if you have basic experience with silk moths. The caterpillars eat many common plants, like cherry, willow, oak or sweet gum. And the caterpillars are black and yellow, and look rather intimidating, but are harmless, despite their intimidating looks. It's really cool to see species in the wild in their natural habitat that I used to raise in captivity in the past. Maybe I'll make a life cycle video of them someday. And here are some of the males of a local leopard moth species. I've had some females of this species too. I've kept them apart to see if they will lay any eggs, but so far I've had no luck with them laying eggs. Anyway, leopard moths may not be the most colorful of all species, but that's okay. They are worthy of looking at. The thing about them is for a group of very large moths, Macrolepidoptera, for those who are you know, the technical jargon, for a large moth family, as in large size and large wingspan, they are severely understudied. And about many species we know very, very little. Interesting little thingies. We definitely got several coming in tonight. Some kind of notodontid, but you know what? I was actually too lazy to identify it. Hmm. Do you know the name? Leave a comment. In my time here I'm actually taking some DNA samples. It may take many months before I have the result, but if there are any new species to science here I will be sure to find them. I don't just film moths for YouTube entertainment, but also for research purposes. Although the conclusion of this type of research can take many months. Another Nudarelia diona coming in. As you can see, folks, this is how they fly. Of course, it's completely disoriented by the light. This person right here is my friend Glenn. Glenn, if you're watching right now, I hope you are satisfied with the videos. Thank you so much for inviting me to Uganda. Oh, but I do recognize this one. This is a species of Hapsi Machiogonia. Yep, what a weird thing to pronounce. Identifying it right now is hard for me, because since recently several new species have been described to science, yet I lack any picture references of them. There are about six species of them, but I can only find pictures of two species. I must do more research. Either way, it is a brilliant and adorable little creature. The leaf shape is convincing.
Well, everyone, the sun is coming up. You know what that means. It's the end of this episode. But stay tuned, subscribe, because there are going to be more moth trapping nights in different places. And we're going to get different species. So stay tuned. Bye bye. Thanks for watching, everyone. This was Bart Coppens, and I was kindly here invited to the country of Uganda by my friend Glenn. Hi. Thank you very much, Glenn. It has been a wonderful experience to see this country and its wildlife for real. Now, what we are trying to do here, this is the property of Mr. Glenn, and we would like to see if we can get tourists or visitors in this property that we are trying to develop. So if you are interested in visiting this place, then feel free to either contact me or contact Mr. Glenn. I will put the contact information in the description of this video or I will pin it in the comments. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Do you want to observe moths and do moth trapping in Uganda the same way I do? It could be possible in the future. Because in the future me and Mr. Glenn will release a website where people can book trips to Uganda. Mr. Glenn owns a property in Uganda and in the future people could rent it from us to have a nice vacation in Uganda or a wildlife trip. If that sounds interesting to you, then leave a comment. Once the website is ready, I will reply to your comment to notify you. It could take a few months to develop everything, because sadly I'm a very busy man nowadays. And organizing trips and excursions and making a whole website takes a lot of time and resources, but it is going to happen. See you soon with more Uganda insect videos. Oh, remember the balakra species from last night? Turns out it flew and landed on the bushes near the light. Next morning it was still chilling there in broad daylight. This gave me an opportunity to film this beauty in broad daylight. Enjoy the close-up. Don't forget, subscribe and check back on my channel once in a while. New stuff is coming.